guys, how's it going? We're gonna be planting some seeds out here in the greenhouse today. It's about 29 outside, but 50 in here and the sun is shining. It's absolutely beautiful. And the goal is to get our hardy perennials started. So things that would normally winter over in our landscape. So we're dealing with Echinacea, Rudbeckia, Eryngium, Delphiniums, Foxglove, a few other that I can't remember off the top of my head. We've also got a couple of tender things like geranium and eucalyptus that I want to get started now. So my thought process is if we get them started today, I'm just doing it in the greenhouse because I want to contain my mess out here. We will move them into the studio where we're maintaining about a 70 degree temperature. We'll get them germinated and grown on a bit. When they're ready to be potted up out of their seed trays, we'll pot them up and then bring them back out here to the greenhouse where they can grow on in more of a cool, environment and they can handle that because they're cold tolerant perennials. I'll probably keep the more tender things in the studio. We'll just play it by ear based on the weather. But that way, when I pot the stuff out of my seed trays, I will then have empty seed trays ready for the next round of seed starting. I'm trying to be organized in the most like efficient I can be with my grow lights and the space that I have. Also, I have an elevated raised bed sitting here in the greenhouse that I want to plant with spinach and lettuce. So some of those cold tolerant greens, I think based on, I mean, we're keeping a steady 50 degrees in here. Some days when it gets a little warmer, like yesterday we saw, I think it was 47 or 48, it's way higher than 50 in here. So I think that the green should do great. It'll be kind of an experiment. This whole year is gonna be a little bit of an experiment on how we can stretch our, our harvest season, our growing season, and how we can best utilize our space. So here's my setup. We do a lot of our potting right here at this table. I mix all of my, this is seed starting mix from our last project that I'll just utilize today. I'm also gonna be winter sowing a yellow bee plant. This is uh, also called yellow spider flower. It's a native uh, wildflower. And it needs a cold stratification period, which it will get when planted in here. And cold stratification just means that the seed needs to be subjected to a certain amount of cold temperature in order to aid germination. Uh, so that's one of the beauties of winter sowing. You can just pop them in these, which we just did a video about it. If you haven't seen it and don't know about winter sowing, it's an amazing way to start seeds. Um, but they'll get the cold stratification and I won't really have to do a whole lot with these. They should just come up nicely. So anyway, I guess we've got kind of three projects going on. Here's our little basket of supplies. These are the seeds for today. The greens that we're gonna be planting in the raised bed are Marvel of Four Seasons, Sweetie Baby Romaine, and Little Hero Baby Leaf Spinach. So these will be going right here. I'm just gonna plant up this little one today. Look at those violas. Oh, they look rough. I think they'll be okay though. I mean, they still have some great flowers. We'll just cut them back and let fresh growth happen and we'll be able to plant them this spring. Anyway, I don't really wanna plant this one yet because that one's pretty big and can get pretty heavy. I'm not gonna do a huge layer of soil in here, just a little bit. These don't need a lot of soil reservoir. So that's where these will go. And then before we go through all of our seeds, this is my basket of supplies. So I've got a cutter and tape for the water jugs. We've got some plant labels here. I'll probably just use these shorter ones right here. They fit under the humidity domes better. And then I've got my garden marker. Okay, we're gonna spread these out. So here's what we got today. These three right here are the tender perennials. So starting at the top, we've got baby blue eucalyptus. I've never started this one from seed, so that should be an interesting experiment. We've got Maverick Coral Geraniums, which are super easy to start from seed. And I really love Coral Geraniums. And then we've got Sweet Purple White Bicolor Dianthus, which I think is a zone six through nine tender perennial. It might winter over here, but it really pretty cut flower. And then these here are perennial or biennial because technically foxglove are biennial, uh, but they self seed around and usually come up in the same spot. So it's kind of like you get a perennial patch. So in that row, we have Sugar Plum, Foxglove, Camelot Cream, and Apricot Beauty. Right here we've got Tango. Is it Agastache, Agastache? I've heard it pronounced either way, but they're really beautiful, tough perennials. And then these are classic, just a Black Eyed Susan Rudbeckia. I wanted to start a bunch of these for uh, the South Garden. And then in this row here, we have Delphinium, so a Pacific Giant Black Knight, and then Pacific Giants Mix. Aren't those gorgeous? And then there's a Veronica Pink Shades. Then we've got four different types of echinacea. There's double decker, prima donna white, green twister, mellow yellows. And then in this last row, we have two new varieties of oryngium. I have a white glitter that I grew from seed and it did great in the landscape last two years. We've got steel blue and blue glitter. These might look kind of similar in the end. I'm not really sure 
but we're gonna try them both anyway. And then we've got some Luisia. I'm excited because out of this whole group of seeds, six of them I've never personally grown from seed. I've maybe grown them from plants I've picked up at a garden center, but it's always fun to see what you can do with seed. Uh, the other things I have out here today are seed starting mix, vermiculite, and then my seed trays. And then the seed trays I'm using are 24 cell. I like them because they're a little bit larger. Uh, but with a lot of these, I don't want to do a ton. You know, I just want enough for a drift out in the garden somewhere and then maybe give some plants to friends and family. Uh, so this should be perfect. And these belong to the seed starting kits that you get from Gardener Supply. I'll show you the bottoms here in a minute, but they come with a tray that's self-watering. Uh, that's a complete game changer. I always hand mist my seeds until they're up and germinated. And once I know that they've got a few roots underneath the soil, then I start using that self-watering tray and it cuts my watering time like less than half. It's amazing. Um, so I don't really feel like if I miss them one day, I don't feel stressed or panicked like I just accidentally killed all of the work that I just put in to get those seeds up. So anyway, they, they have been really nice. I think I'm gonna work on this kind of assembly line style. I'm going to pre-moisten all my seed starting mix, get all the trays filled, make my tags and then plant all the seeds so that I can just kind of like boom, boom, boom through it instead of do one tray at a time from start to finish. So step one is getting the soil moist and filling up the trays. You know what? Scratch that. Step one is gonna be making all of my tags while everything is still clean and I'm not muddy yet. Now I'm gonna mix up my soil. I always just forget to do all those little fiddly things that require dry, you know, like writing seed tags. Once you've got water and wet soil introduced to the area, it gets a lot more difficult. So if you can get those kinds of things done first, do that. So I'm glad to have those things finished. Now the consistency that we're shooting for with the soil is uh, when I grab hold of it like this, I wanna be able to hold it and squeeze it and have it hold together in kind of a loose form, but I don't want a bunch of water to be dripping out of it. I just want it to be lightly moistened throughout. Okay, let's get this done. Hi, Russell. What are you doing over there? You found my coat, huh? I think this is perfect. So if I get a handful and squeeze it together, you can see it kind of holds a loose form right there. But when I squeeze it really hard, ugh, no water comes out of it. It's perfect, perfect. So we're gonna fill our seed trays. Once you've got your first kind of layer of soil in there, they look full, but you wanna take your fingers and just lightly press the soil down, just lightly, not hard. You don't wanna pack it in there, but that way you'll know which cells you need to add more soil to, like this one, check that out. It looked full, but it's only about half full. And you don't wanna find that out after you put the seeds in and water and see all that soil settle. Uh, you wanna have a full tray. So just lightly tamp it in and then we'll add a little bit more, okay. Same thing. Perfect. Tray one is done.
are now all prepped and they're ready for seed. So there's the stack of trays that will go back into the studio. I filled 13, I think that's how many I'm gonna need. I brought out an extra just in case. And then I filled three of the water jugs with soil. Now I used organic potting mix, the regular potting mix for winter sowing. It tends to hold more moisture. I've had better luck with that. And then I used two bags. 16 dry quart bags of the seed starter mix to fill all of those just to give you an idea of how much it takes. I'm going to plant the water jugs first and get those out back behind the greenhouse with the others. I will link the video of the winter sowing down below if you want to learn more details because I won't go into huge detail on it today but the um, quick quickly the benefits of winter sowing is one you don't need grow lights you don't need special equipment um, you don't have to fuss with them very much so we put pre-moistened soil regular potty mix in the water jugs uh, we have them cut to where the top will act as a little greenhouse cover we're going to seed our stuff in there today moisten it with a water mister thing i'm just so good with words today spray bottle mercy spray bottle we'll water it down we're going to tape it closed put it out back and then we're just going to keep an eye on them for moisture that's the biggest thing we don't want them to dry out but other than that um, they'll just kind of wake up with the natural cycle of the weather outside and start to grow so that is what we're going to be doing with our yellow bee plant i'm really wanting to amp up kind of the amount of not wildflowers necessarily but maybe more native drought tolerant things out in the south garden that the pollinators will really like because that's where we do a lot of our uh, food production and our orchards out out there not that these are going to be blooming at the time of orchards blooming but you know what i mean i'm um, just kind of bolstering the number of pollinator friendly plants out there i think is a good thing so anyway we're going to plant these up and then i think what i'll do because i do have some kind of groups of plants like i've got several echinacea several uh, foxglove i'll stop before each one maybe and just kind of show you how i'm going to plant the seed that might make this video really long so I, i'm not real sure but let's get the water jugs planted. I'm gonna to try to make the surface as level as possible. And then I just followed the instructions on the pack. So planting depth, 1 8 of an inch. I'm just gonna scatter them kind of evenly. I'm breaking this amount of seeds into thirds here-ish. Okay. It's gonna kind of rough the soil up. Perfect. Next. Ready for our first two trays we're going to try to kind of cram things together a bit based on the seed count of each variety i have so i'm going to be putting one of my varieties of echinacea in with some geraniums because the seed count works out nicely uh, some varieties i only got like 15 seeds of these two this is the green twister this is mellow yellows uh, double decker i got 20 of those seeds and prima donna i have 30 of those seeds and 10 seeds of geranium i tend to plant two seeds per cell most of the time regardless of the instructions because i want to make sure i have a plant come up in that in that tray or in that cell i see some packets of seeds like on lisianthus i recently saw one set of instructions told me to put one seed per cell but i want to make sure that every cell has a plant so if something goes wrong uh, because germination rate is often not 100%. I don't want a cell to sit empty. Uh, but in like this case, the echinacea instructions are telling us to put three to four seeds per cell, which you could absolutely do, but I want to stretch some of these, like the, especially the ones I only have 15 seeds of, I want to stretch them a little bit further. And sometimes I'll go to the trouble of separating seedlings if I get more than one up in a cell, but most of the time I just thin them out. It's part of the process and it's totally fine to do that. So with echinacea seeds, you just want to barely cover the seeds basically just press them into the top of the soil surface and then we're going to cover them with the lightest layer of vermiculite which helps to retain moisture helps with algae growth and fungal issues and it's kind of the same thing with geranium tells you to barely cover the seeds so it's kind of perfect and you know what it's basically the same instructions for the foxglove agastache eryngium veronica and luisia so i'm just going to go ahead and plant all of those as well we're just going to press the seed into to the top of the soil and cover thinly with vermiculite the other ones it looks like we have some different instructions like uh, burying the seeds eighth of an inch and so on and so forth so i'll go over those when we get to them but we're going to get the bulk of the planting done right now
I did fill one too many, so I'll either just reuse that soil later or find something else to plant in there. But I realized that the eucalyptus and dianthus also want to be surface sown, so I will be doing exactly the same with these, just pressing the seeds in and covering them with vermiculite. These, the delphiniums, so I'll do one tray of each of the delphiniums and one tray of the black-eyed Susans. They all want to be planted one eighth of an inch deep, which is not very deep at all. So I'll cover the seeds with soil and then I'm also going to be putting a layer of vermiculite on the top there as well because it just helps so much with moisture retention. So all the trays will really look the same. So let's get these wrapped up. the trays are planted we're going to move them to the studio in a second but with that extra one that I had sitting on the ground I decided to seed an extra flat of the Camelot cream foxglove because I think that those would be a really fun thing to give my mom for Mother's Day they'll be at the perfect planting stage if everything goes right um, and she I think would really like that color and she loves foxglove as well so anyway that's what I did with the last one and here they all are looking exactly the same <laughs> for the moment. It won't be long though. There will be little sprouts and a lot of these will quickly fill up the tray and we'll get to pot them up and bring them right back out here. It's so exciting. Before we move into the studio though, I do wanna get that elevated raised bed planted really quickly. That won't take long at all. We'll put a little bit of soil at the bottom. This is all the soil I had that was thawed out. So we'll just use what we have here. It probably won't fill it and that's okay because like I said, these don't need an extensive soil reservoir they don't have a huge root system and we're going to be harvesting them young most likely this raised bed does have a self-watering reservoir um, i'm not going to be watering super super heavy but that is nice in the hot part of the summer so anyway let's get this done <music> planted the spinach over on this side so I kind of broke it into thirds so spinach and then I planted one of the varieties of lettuce in the center and the other over here but I had a lot of the marvel of four seasons so I kind of scattered some of that seed into this section as well so it'd be nice and thick and time will tell on that one I'll report back when I start seeing some green so let's get all of our seed trays moved to the studio and then I've got to water them in put the domes on them and we are done <laughs> tucked into their new spot. 12 of the trays went in the bamboo LED grow light garden right here. I've got other grow lights I need to kind of organize down the wall there. And then I've got two trays of Lysianthus going already on this one. Uh, this is the tray of Verbascum, which I don't know if you can see them. The sprouts are tiny, but they are up. And then this is the last 
the 13th flat from today. So the lights right here, these are LED lights that are really strong and they do not have to be raised and lowered for seedlings. And I've put them to the test and it works really well. Um, I've grown sweet peas and foxglove and delphiniums and all kinds of other things in, in this garden before in years past. And the lights stay put right up there, no raising and lowering. Same with these systems right here. These are the three tier sunlight gardens. When I initially got them, they just had regular bulbs and now they've been swapped out for the high efficiency LED bulbs and I don't have to raise and lower them. So proof's in the pudding though, so I'll show you. These are some seedlings I recently started, but you can see there's no legginess at all and the uh, lights stay put. I don't raise and lower them at all anymore. This is the first tray of verbascum I seeded. It's looking really good. We've got basil, we've got dill, we've got a beautiful cucumber right here. Peppers, I already transplanted one of my varieties of tomatoes up into other pots and there's other tomatoes in the back there. And soon when we look at these, they're just gonna be full of green. Oh, can't wait. So at this point, I check on them every single day. I missed them if needed. The humidity domes help with that to where sometimes I don't have to water some trays for a few days in a row, which is amazing. If I notice excess moisture build up, especially on the seeds that don't want to be wet, um, like Echinacea oryngium, uh, my Lysianthus that I have going, uh, I make sure to take the dome off for a few hours, let everything kind of dry up a little bit, like not dry out, but dry up a little bit, and then I'll put the dome back on. Uh, and then I leave the domes on until pretty much the whole tray has sprouted, and then and they come off and fans start to blow. I've got an oscillating fan in here. I've got one pointed at my other seedlings now and I'll get another one going on this corner, like this side of the room later once I've got some growth. And then let me show you the self-watering tray because I think I did mention it before. Uh, so this is the reservoir right here that holds water. And then our seed trays, let me just take one off here real quick. I'll set it right here. So the tray sits on top of this wicking mat, which goes down into the reservoir. It sits on top of this platform right here. Uh, you can get replacement wicking mats. Uh, I usually use them for two or three seasons before I replace them though. I think I mentioned before that I wait until the plants have grown a little bit. So I know they've got a little bit of a root system in there that will utilize the water that's you know being drawn up. You know, for a while, they're just gonna be seeds with tiny little roots at the surface. Um, and that's an awful lot of water that has to make it to the top. So I don't know, I think it's just because it's the way I've always done it, you know, with the mister bottle, I feel like I have a little more control until they get big enough to utilize more water. So at that point I will fill the reservoir and sometimes I can get over a week between watering, like filling the reservoir back up. I don't have to water my seed trays at all. And so that, especially when I've got hundreds of seed trays go, growing or going, is it has been a game changer for me uh, because I've got a lot of other things going on too, a lot of other projects that I want to be messing with and I don't wanna have to be in here all day long watering seeds. Anyway, that's it. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. We got a lot done today. Really happy with it. I'm super excited to have these filled. And like I said, I'm hoping. So here we are. What day is it? Beginning-ish of January, beginning to middle part. So I'm thinking by the 1st of March, middle of March, I'll be potting these up into bigger size cans, moving them out to the greenhouse. And that's about the time I'm gonna be starting a lot of my stuff. Uh, it's really important not to start your things too early if you don't have a place to put them. Um, so like some of these need to be start, started 10 to 16 weeks before your average last frost date, um, in which case, you know, now is a great time to get them started. Um, but some of them, like if your seed packet say six to eight weeks or four to six weeks, really try to stay within that, that time frame. Um, because if you don't have somewhere to put them where it's high light, where they can grow on, then they can start to languish in their trays. They can start to get leggy, root bound, and that will really set a plant back. So just be mindful of that. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Super excited to give you updates on these as we go along. Hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.